Denver 7 On Demand is brought to you by Ferguson and BAC Appliance Center. The best in bath, kitchen, and lighting for your home. Good morning, I'm Eric Lufer. And I'm Jacqueline Allen. Here's the latest from Denver 7. This morning, investigators are getting closer to finding justice for missing Colorado mother Kelsey Barrett. She has not been seen since Thanksgiving and is presumed dead. Kelsey's fiance, Patrick Frazee, faces first degree murder charges. And now ABC News is reporting from multiple sources that a 32 year old nurse in Idaho is being investigated for possibly disposing of Kelsey's cell phone. You may remember Kelsey's phone pinged to Twin Falls, Idaho in the days after she was reported missing. The woman has not been charged with any crime. Her exact relationships to Kelsey and Frazee are not known. Today, a judge in Southern Colorado will rule on who will get custody of Kelsey's one year old daughter. She is currently in custody of Kelsey's mom, but Frazee's mother wants some sort of visitation rights. And right now, a search for a Fort Carson soldier accused of murder has gone global. The body of Quang Par was found in a trash bin in Indianapolis just two days before Christmas. This morning, her husband, 21-year-old Peter Van Bobby Leon, has been charged in her murder. Investigators believe Leon has fled to Thailand to avoid being caught and is wanted for both murder and desertion. Court filings detail potential warning signs of trouble. Trouble. Records claim Leon had assaulted Parr and threatened to kill her a month ago. She got a protective order against him and moved to Indianapolis to be with family just three weeks before she was found dead. Today, Democrats take control of the House of Representatives, but it's in anyone, it's anyone's guess rather if a shift in power will end the partial government shutdown. Tomorrow night will mark two weeks since the shutdown began, and Washington, D.C. officials worry it could last for several more weeks. As you know, the biggest point of contention is funding for the border wall. President Trump says he is not willing to back down from his demand of $5 billion for wall funding. Democrats are only willing to give half of that. Here in Colorado, nearly 300 federal employees have filed for unemployment because of the partial shutdown. Many of them remain in limbo as bills continue to come in, but they don't know if they'll get their paycheck. Andrea Papelka is an IT specialist at the Denver Federal Center. She's worried she'll have to choose between paying her bills or buying groceries. You know, all those things are already pre-budgeted. So when something like this happens and you're not going to get your next check, it's like, okay, well, what do I do? There are resources for some of those workers. The Action Center in Lakewood is offering to help furloughed employees with everything from food to rental and utility assistance. There have been eight flu outbreaks so far and 596 people have been hospitalized. And in the Denver metro area, it's a pretty serious situation. Take a look at this. In December, the number of visits to the emergency room for the flu spiked, especially during the last week of the month. When you look at those numbers compared to this time last year, experts say we could be in for more outbreaks in February and March. 596, that's a big number. That number doesn't even include people who are at home dealing with the flu. The groups most impacted by the flu have been teenagers and kids, as well as the elderly. About 26% of those hospitalized are under the age of 18, and 25% were over the age of 65. If you're in the, one of the high-risk categories, so that would be elderly, children, particularly those between six months and two years of age, or somebody with a chronic condition, diabetes, asthma, heart condition, those people want to call their physician and make sure that they first of all, are well enough for the shot, but second of all, that they get it as soon as possible. Sandra Cruz with United Healthcare says people are contagious one to two days before flu symptoms even show up, so you could be exposed and not even know it. Reporting in Denver, Micah Smith, Denver 7. And you can make sure you and your family are covered in case you're impacted by the flu or other illnesses. The deadline to get coverage through Connect for Health Colorado is January 15th. Your insurance would go into effect February 1st. Now, we know it can be a bit intimidating to pick a health insurance plan, so we are holding a Contact 7 call center tonight. It's from 4 to 6.30. You can talk with the Connect for Health Colorado representative to find out which plan is best for you, and we will share the number to call starting at 4 p.m. here on Denver 7. Today, a senior living facility in Centennial should be back to normal. Residents had been in quarantine since Sunday because of a mysterious illness that was spreading. 11 people got sick on Sunday at the Morning Star at Jordan Senior Living Facility, prompting the quarantine. There were not new cases of the illness within the facility yesterday, so that's why operations could 
go back to normal today. And the monthly report on rent across the U.S. shows some Denver suburbs are close in price to L.A. and San Diego. According to apartmentlist.com, the average price of a two-bedroom apartment in Denver was $1,340. The average price in Brighton, Littleton, and 14, those prices are $1,800 a month and even higher. So compare our suburb prices to L.A., where rent is averaging $1,750 a month. San Diego, more than $2,000. However, Places like Seattle and Austin are significantly cheaper. Today is the second day in the Broncos' search for a new head coach. Today, the team will be interviewing Los Angeles Rams quarterback coach Zach Taylor. Our Broncos insider Troy Rank says while Taylor doesn't have head coaching experience, his offensive expertise could be enough to impress general manager John Elway. Here's a look at the other people to uh, planning to talk. To the Broncos, Steelers offensive line coach Mike Munchak tomorrow, Patriots defensive coordinator Brian Flores on Saturday, and Bears defensive coordinator Vic Fangio on Monday. They already interviewed former Colts coach Chuck Pagano. And a Centennial-based company is working on a new airplane that would make our flights a lot faster. Boom Technology is creating a supersonic airliner that would cut travel times, get this, in half. That means flying from New York to London would just take just a little more than three hours. Later today, the company is expected to let us know how it plans to pay for this new invention. It says the plane has 55 seats and tickets would cost about the same as business class on a regular airline now. It is expected to start test flying the aircraft soon and we'll be sure to ask about the potential noise those supersonic planes could cause. And if you can, try to stay up a little bit later tonight. The first meteor shower of the new year peaks this evening and here in Colorado, we're in a really great position to see it. The Quadrantas meteor shower is expected to start around 10 or 11 p.m. tonight and last a couple of hours. Indicate a half an hour to an hour of your time. Put down your phones. You want to let your eyes adjust. Sometimes that takes a half an hour. And if you glance at anything bright, then boom, you have to start over again. So you just want to do that and I'll lay back in a lounge chair so you get as much of the sky in your field of view as possible. And in perfect dark conditions, you can see anywhere from 60 to 100 meteors per hour. NASA says the timing of this shower's peak is short, so try and set that alarm to help remind yourself. And from the First Alert Weather Center, here's Lisa Hidalgo with that warm-up forecast. Yeah, it's not only warm, but it's also going to be clear tonight for that meteor shower, so it should be some pretty good conditions. Take a look, blue, blue skies, clear skies right now, and we still have some snow on the grass and on the rooftops. We're going to get even more melting today. Started off this morning in the teens and 20s, so much warmer than where we've been every morning this week. And by this afternoon, we're likely going to see highs right around 50 degrees, so some low to mid-50s between 2 and 3 o'clock. Sunny skies statewide and another beautiful night tonight. Pretty mild. Again, more 20s and 30s early Friday morning. Even warmer tomorrow. We're going to be under a mostly sunny sky on Friday, close to 60. Just about as warm on Saturday with a high of 58. We'll start to see a little increase in cloud cover, though. And this next storm, it's going to bring with it a chance for some snow in the mountains on Sunday. We'll see increasing clouds here in town, and we could even get a few flurries into early Monday morning, but pretty mild. 40s, 50s, and even 60s across the seven-day forecast. We'll take it. Thanks, Lisa. Well, tomorrow you'll have a new option to get up to the slopes at Winter Park on the weekends. The Amtrak Winter Park Express starts tomorrow, and it will run the first two Fridays of the month through March and on the weekends. Fares start at $29. If you plan to use it this Friday, there are only tickets left for the 7 a.m. train. And all new this season, the train will now offer snacks and drinks on both legs of the trip. If you don't have a ski pass for some Colorado ski resorts, you may want to shy away from making it up to some of the most popular resorts. The Aspen Times reports single day lift ticket prices are skyrocketing around the state. For example, Vail and Beaver Creek are both charging $209 for a walk up window ticket. That's $10 cheaper if you get it online. Aspen Skiing Company isn't too far behind. They charge $179 for a walk up ticket. Ski Co covers Aspen, Aspen Highlands, Snowmass, and Buttermilk. And Vail Resorts, which operates Vail and Beaver Creek and others, they say they reward guests for their loyalty when they buy ski passes. All right, today that 70 year tradition that is so uniquely Colorado continues in Loveland. The Chamber of Commerce will reveal the card and cachet being used this year for Valentine's Day. Each year, more than 100 
130,000 Valentines get sent to Loveland to get a special stamp on the envelope before being remailed out. The city also sells a special Loveland Valentine's Day card. This is the largest Valentine remailing program of its kind in the country. It started back in 1947. And what a great tradition. Mm -hmm. This has been your Denver 7 On Demand update. Thanks for joining us. Check back here later tonight for another update and download the Denver 7 app for breaking news and alerts.